let's talk about the upper bound of n. And what would happen when the upper bound is huge like the one below, where you're summing up to 400, which means you would have to add 400 terms. An example of that would be, if I take i squared, I would have to start with 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared, and continue that all the way up to 400 squared, which is quite an arduous task. So we do have formulas in such cases which we can use, and we're going to explore some of those formulas. When the upper bound of n is extremely large, it's often helpful to use summation formulas like the one below to help us or give us an easier way to calculate the sum. The, the ones you see on your screen are very common, and it might even be helpful for you to commit them to memory so that when you see such problems, you'll have an alternate way to find the sum. Let's take a look at just a couple of them as we work these out. So the first one I'm going to look at is summing up a constant. And for our example, the constant is going to be 13. And just for illustration purposes, I'm going to keep the value of n small. So it's going to be 3. So what this means is that we're going to add 13 three times. So there's the first time, the second time, the third time. And that's easy to see. That's going to be 39. Looking at our summation formula, in this case, c is equal to 13 and n is equal to 3. So it's obvious that 13 times 3 is equal to 39. It gives us the same sum. We'll look at more examples of this later. Let's take a look at a sec second one. Here we have uh, a summing up i is the same thing as n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Let's take a look at a simple example to illustrate this. So i is equal to 1, n is 5. So then we're just summing up i. So the first time we run through, we have i is equal to 1, i is equal to 2, i is equal to 3, i is equal to 4, and then finally i is equal to 5. We sum that up, and we get a value of 15. But how does this formula fit into it? Well, in this case, our upper bound is 5. So let's replace n with 5, and we're going to have 5 times 5 plus 1 divided by 2, which gives us 15 and you can see we have the same answer. So instead of adding up each term by term, we can use the substitutionary formula to calculate the value. This comes in really handy when we're going to a large number like 100. If I'm adding up 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to plus 98 plus 99 plus 100, I can take my upper value, n, which in this case is 100, or my last term, and replace that into this formula up here, n times n plus 1 divided by 100. So 100 times 100 plus 1 divided by 2 is equal to 50, 50, 5050. There's some neat other uh, ways to look at this, too. There's a lot of exploration that you may want to consider on your own. Now the other two, I'll leave that up to you. But it's just easy to note that, or should note that, if you're summing up i squared, you can replace n, the upper bound, into this formula, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6, and it's equal to the sum. And if we're uh, summing from i equals 1 to n of i cubed, you can use this formula as a substitute. So there's different ways we can work around large values of n. These are just a couple of them. Soon you'll see other examples to illustrate this even further. Our first example of summation formulas, we're, we are going to find the sum of 5, where i increments from starting at 1 going up to 8. So our first example, we're going to use the formula uh, i is equal to 1 to n of c is equal to c times n. So we see that we're going to add 5 8 times. So we had 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, and we continue that 8 times because our upper bound is 8. That's the same thing as saying 5 times 8, which is 40. Example number 2 of summation formulas. Find the sum of 7k as k increments from 1 to 3. First of all, we're going to rewrite the problem by moving the 7 outside the sum, and we're just going to find the sum of k from 1 to 3. So 
Note that this problem can be rewritten with the scalar multiple, which is 7, in front of the summation, allowing us to use this following formula. So n is the upper bound. We can substitute n, in this case 3, into this equation. So what this will look like is that our upper bound 3 will go here. So we got 3 times 3 plus 1 divided by 2. And don't forget to multiply that by 7, which gives us an answer of 42. Example number 3 is summation formulas. Find the sum of j squared minus j as j increments from 1 to 5. So looking at this a little bit closer, we can rewrite this as j, the sum of j squared minus the sum of j as both increment from 1 to 5. Now we recall that the sum of i squared is the same thing as n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. And the sum of i is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2 which means that this upper bound n is going to be replaced into each of these n values for the formula. So we're going to put 5 in for n here. So we're going to have 5 times 5 plus 1 and so on, minus 5 times 5 plus 1 divided by 2. We substitute the given values, which ultimately gives us 55 minus 15, which is equal to 40.